Hi, Hi scientists. scientists! My name is Joy. And my name is Steph. And we're here in Nature Postings Lab. And we want to welcome you guys to our new Nature Memoirs online classes. So let's get started. We're going to be learning about survivors and how animals adapt to their environment. We're going to be learning what are adaptations and different types of adaptations, but this is one of three classes that we're going to be teaching. So all the lesson plans are going to be on the link on our bio so you guys can download it. But today we're going to be focusing only on the first part of the lesson plan. Which are the structural adaptations, or otherwise known as physical adaptation. And let's start. What is what is an adaptation? Well, an adaptation is anything an animal uses to survive in the wild. Animals are always changing, and always and plants too. Mm -hmm. um, and they use these different characteristics and traits to survive out there, where obviously we're not there to take care of. Them. <laughs> exactly. So anything that makes an animal or a plant or any living thing to be successful. That is an adaptation. Today we're just like we said, focusing in the physical adaptation. So I think that what better way to start than using the animals? Oceans. <laughs> yeah, and the oceans. We are both marine biologists, so we love anything related with the water. So I'm gonna start with this guy, and then you start with that guy. Okay, so let's start with a crayfish. Okay, what is an adaptation? What we said is everything that allows the animal to be successful. Okay, so what makes our crayfish so successful? Well. It has different types of legs. We have legs for defense. It has walking legs. Okay, it has eight walking legs. And it also has swimming legs on this part of what people call the tail. We were scientists, so we call it the right way. Mm -hmm. um, this is the, abdomen. the abdomen. So these are swimming legs. So this animal is adapted to survive in the bottom of the rivers where they live and they actually can defend themselves they eat anything that they can find and they have a hard shell to protect themselves and just to be very successful in the river so there's a lot of different things it has two eyes on the top to look for predators and it also have these amazing beautiful antennas that they can actually smell taste and feel so these are just physical adaptations besides all of other things that they have now moving on guys to the fish, the fish is one of the main examples we use for adaptations. Because it's so diverse, we love to look at the fish at the physical attributes to learn about adaptations. So over here you guys can see obviously fish have fins, right? So we have these big dorsal fins on top here. We got this back caudal fin, right? An anal fin down here. We got some pelvic fins on the bottom and the pectoral fins on the side. Each of these fins are used for different types of swimming. Right? So the dorsal fin on top, it keeps this fish nice and level, right? So it doesn't turn around. Mm -hmm. Caudal fin on the back, it can propel it forward, right? It can also be used for turning. And the pectoral fin's the same. All of these fins have different purposes and they're used by the fish to survive. So these are considered adaptations. If you guys try to open your eyes in the water sometimes, it can get very fuzzy, it can yeah. hurt, right? So these it's fish- salt water, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these fish have these these membranes over their eyes. What are those membranes called, Mr. Jones? They are called nictitating membranes. Nictitating membranes. And they actually... That's a big word for our science. Uh, these nictitating membranes are actually used to cover the eyelids, right? Because they, like, they don't have... It's like having eyelids. goggles. Yeah, right? Yeah. And they cover the eyes so that they protect them. And just like our bodies are made to walk on land, the fish's body survived because they have this torpedo shape. This is called a fusiform shape. You go like this, like a torpedo, right? Yeah. And this fusiform shape allows them to swim faster and cut through water with their hydrodynamics. And also on the, of course, I can go on for days, but the scales on this fish, they are a layer of protection against the harsh, harsh waters. I'm sure you guys wouldn't want to live in there. So everything about the fish, everything about the crayfish are adaptations to allow it to survive. So two different aquatic specimens 
okay? Fresh water, by the way, both of them. Yeah. But different adaptations depending where they live in the rivers. I have a hard shell. You have a soft, scaly body. I have legs. I got fins. Okay, I have two eyes on the top. You got two eyes on the sides. Oh, do you see that? So everything about these animals is related to what is going to make them be very successful in, in their, their environment. Life. Awesome! But here in Nature Pulsion, we also have a lot of different animals. And we're going to be just showing you guys four different animals and four different adaptations found in all of them. Okay? Are you guys ready? Yes, we so. are. We gotta take a glove. Yes. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes. Guys, at Nature Pulsion, we have very rigid procedures when we have to do with how our animal cares. Always get the right size glove. <laughs> yes, always get the right size. There you go. It's really convenient just to blow your gloves and put them in. It's also convenient to have the right size. <laughs> okay, scientists. So the first topic we're going to talk about is actually camouflage. Now, a lot of you guys have heard about camouflage before, and we see it everywhere, especially if you're hunting and stuff like that. You have to wear camouflage yes. to blend in with your surroundings. Now, unfortunately, animals can't just change their clothes like we do. No. They have to live in their skin. And over here we have two great examples of animals that know how to camouflage. Now this here is Bindi. And this is Adina. And these are bearded dragons. Now bearded dragons live in Australia, in the very, very, very hot areas of Australia. Maybe deserts, maybe grasslands. Um, and they are known to be very good at camouflage. Mm -hmm. Alright, so you can see that obviously they have different color patterns on them. Can you show them? Adina. Yeah, so uh, Adina is a very bright orange color and Bindi is this darker kind of grayish brownish color, right? That's because they probably come from different environments. Adina probably comes from somewhere that's sandy, has a lot of orange, you know, sand around that she can camouflage in. And Bindi probably comes from an area that's more grassy, that might, might have more shrubs or dead grass. Now, not only can these guys camouflage just by looking, like the surroundings, they can actually change their color. Oh yes, they can. That's super cool. It is very It's not only the chameleon. A lot of people just think that are only chameleons, but no, there's all plenty of other animals that can change colors. Oh, definitely. Too. So these guys, they can change shades to match their surroundings. If you guys look at page number three, I believe, mm -hmm. um, you can see that we have a picture of the same bearded dragon that changed colors to match its background, mm -hmm. right? They don't like to be messed with too much. They are very sweet, but a lot of the times in the wild, they don't like people. So they do change their colors quite rapidly in order to avoid being detected by somebody that they think might eat them. And it, it's very interesting because Bindi, if if you put it like next to like a little bushy area, it will like be, it looks just like a piece of log. But then on the other hand, she will be like, Adina will be perfect and like camouflaging in the sand. Absolutely. Especially in Australia that everything is like so orangey and so yes. beautiful. Okay, scientists. So now we're going to be talking about another type of adaptation. And it's one of my favorites. It's called mimicry. Mimicry is when an animal or a plant mimic or imitates the behavior or the color of another per of another animal that is dangerous. In our lab, this is indigo. Can you say hi to indigo? Hi, indigo. So indigo is a blue tongue skin, also from Australia, a different environment than actually the Adina and Bindi that you already saw. Indigo is a great example of mimicry. In the case of our beautiful indigo, she is not dangerous at all. She's <laughs> a sweetheart. Yeah, she, she's actually really, really sweet. So the thing with indigo, she lives in the same place that another very dangerous animal called the dead adder. And you guys can actually can see the picture of the dead adder in our lesson plan. Page three. Page three. So indigo, they share the same habitat that the dead adder, which is one of the top 10 most venomous snakes in the world. And what indigo does is actually mimics the adaptation of hers, like all her body has the same pattern of the dead adder. Okay, they have the same stripes. And if you see as Indigo's head, they have they have like a this kind of like a cone triangular shape that is very, very well known in the venomous snakes. Also, she pretends to be a snake 
um, moving like a snake. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> she sneezed. Um, like moving like a snake and having very, very tiny legs um, that actually are a different color of their body allows her to hide those legs and actually pretend to be the snake. Okay. I think it's like, it's, it's like kind of like, like the best animal for Halloween. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like I pretend to be Captain Hook. Hook. No. Okay, so I'm Wendy, then he's Peter Pan. Okay, so we pretend to be something else and we'll start acting and dressing like the other character. Well, that's what she does. She's actually pretending to be a venomous snake, but she's not actually. She loves to eat tiny little animals. She's not venomous at all. And she loves sweets like papayas and apples, apples and anything like that. So another adaptation, mimicry. Okay, say bye bye to you people. Bye Indigo. <laughs> <laughs> He's really fast. Okay, ready? There you go. The next animal we have for you guys is our Euromastix lizard. Now, some people call this the spiky tail lizard, and you guys can see because he has a very, very spiky tail. Steph, you forgot to introduce him. I was about to introduce him. Oh, today. sorry. <laughs> Now his name is Nigel, and of course he's a Nigerian Euromastix, so he comes from Nigeria. Now you guys can see that he does have this amazingly beautiful spiky tail down here. Now he uses that not only to hit his predators if he feels intimidated, but he also likes to maybe do a little of a mimicry himself. Now he, right? he kind of plays pretend, right? He, he makes people think that he's very spiky all over. Actually, his scales over here on the back are very, very slippery, and he has a very flat body. It's what we call depressed, right? Mm -hmm. And the depressed body can actually fit underneath these rocks in the ground, and he will leave out his tail, so if anything comes to eat him, he'll just shake it around a little bit and show them that he's nothing to be messed with. Even though he's a complete sweetheart, <laughs> yes. he doesn't eat anything except vegetation and fruits and all that good stuff. He doesn't eat anything that has a mother. He's a veget <laughs> he's our vegetarian. He's a little guy. vegetarian. He's adorable. He does have a friend. We want to bring his friend. Yeah, we're not. Yeah. Now here we do have a friend of his, which is a Moroccan Euromastix. Mm -hmm. All right, they do have similar shapes, similar body shapes, but a little bit different colorations. Okay, now these guys, very interestingly, just like the bearded dragons, can actually change color due mm -hmm. to the environment and due to the temperature. So they do a little bit of camouflage along with our bearded dragon friends. So these guys have a lot of physical adaptations, okay, that allows them to be successful. Like Steph says, very soft skin to squeeze themselves on the rocks. Yeah. Sharp nails. Uh, sharp nails to dig because they yeah. love to dig on the rocks. Absolutely. And of course they have the eyes on the top because of course they a lot of a lot of animals like to eat them. So they are prey. So they, they need eyes on the top to observe. They have their ears on the side and they're covered with a little like a hard bone. But they are really, really, really sweet animals. But it's really good just to see all about their body. Uh, absolutely. So say bye to Nigel and Walter. Bye, Walter. Bye, Walter. So, scientists, this is Abel. And Abel is an Indian green neck. And we brought him today to the lab so to talk about physiology. If you see Abel, he has a great adaptation. He has a strong beak. But his beak, do you see? His beak is just more to get, oh, and he's loud too. Yeah, it's more to eat, to break seeds and break little things. See, he's not, he doesn't, he's just throwing tension. Mm. Now, if you see his legs, Abel has this wonderful like toes that are kind of like two toes to the front, two toes to the back. Those are uh, perching legs. And perching legs allows Abel just to perch or to sit on branches. He has a long, long, long tail to keep himself balanced. Every animal that you see with a long tail means for balance. He has feathers to cover his, his body and he also has two big wings to fly. Of course, he has clip wings so he cannot skate because he did skate wings. Um, Abel, it's, it's a parrot. Um, and again, there's different types of birds. And the fun part about the birds and the adaptations of the birds is like the beak and the feet are related. Okay, because depending on where they live, is what they eat. 
okay? So Abel, he lives on branches, so he has these wonderful feet, and what he needs, he needs a strong beak, but not too strong, but a strong beak to eat fruits, and to eat nuts, and tiny little animals, and he he is a little, little bit of a diva. Right, Abel? this one? No kisses? <laughs> yeah, he eats nuts. Okay. Okay, there you go. Ooh, oh, he didn't like that. Abel. <laughs> so Abel is, is a great example of a tasteless and how everything has to work together in order for them to survive. We went over four different structural or physical adaptations today. Number one, we're going to review, it's camouflage, which is? Camouflage is when an animal blends into its surroundings, either by changing its color or being by the color of its surroundings already. Exactly. Number two, we talk about mimicry. When an animal mimics another animal or plant in order to uh, save itself by looking more dangerous. Yeah, and we talk about like physical um, adaptations and we talk about Nigel, Annabelle, and how whatever they have on their body it, it's very relevant to what they eat and where they live. Okay, so they are not gonna have things that are not gonna be useful for survival. For survival. So that is all for our nature memoir, Survivors Part One. Part one. We'll see you next week in our Survivors Part Two, when we're gonna be talking about behavioral adaptations, which are really cool, and you guys are gonna meet more of our MP squad. We're gonna say. Bye scientists! Bye scientists!